Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zill here once again with another video. Um, here in a, ho a hotel um, somewhere near Portland. I'm here for uh, my girls' conference. Um, we're gonna be here for a few days. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. So uh, <clears throat> her job's paying her to go out to this cool conference. But for me, um, I'm working on some uh, computer stuff, um, microcontroller stuff. So I wanted to show you how much awesome stuff is in this one little bag and what I bring um, when I go you know, out and about. And just uh, some stuff I'm working on. I'm working on um, some uh, tiny computing microcontroller projects uh, for some future products. Uh, so let's take a look. All right, so I have in this box um, a lot of awesome stuff. Um, shout out to Adafruit too. Oh my God. I've been kind of doing an extremely deep dive into everything, uh, microcontrollers and um, tiny computing, uh, CircuitPython, MicroPython, uh, Arduino, uh, mainly because I'm over making uh, iPhone apps, Android apps. So let's see what we got in here. Uh, once again, shout out to Adafruit. Um, so we're gonna start things off with this uh, Circuit Playground. It's a really cool um, experimental developmental board. And here, let me plug it in real quick. plug it in and um, yeah it has a whole bunch of uh, cool uh, neo pixels on it. it has like a whole bunch right there um, I don't really have a program to do anything at the moment um, but yeah as you can see tons of uh, pins and sensors and buttons um, and I have some also some really cool interesting things I'm gonna try to do that I haven't seen any guides on it um, but yeah this is super awesome lots of cool things you could do with it um, I brought some of these uh, alligator uh, clips. You know, you can um, connect and do a whole bunch of interesting, cool things. There's sensor pads. You probably even make a like MIDI keyboard. You can do a lot of cool things with this. So that's the Ader Circuit Fruit um, right there. Um, I got uh, quite a few of these guys. Uh, I'm gonna be testing these. I'm going to make a, vi a few videos on all the projects I'm doing. Um, but I won't go too deep into it, but I carry this um, ESP8266, which is really interesting microcontroller because it has Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth and um, a lot of also um, nice functionalities with the um, tons of pins and um, yeah, really cheap but uh, super powerful. So I got a few projects I'm doing there with this that I needed. Um, and here we have, hold on. Um, these are really cool. These are, um, this is a clone of the Arduino uh, Pro Micro. So you get a nice close up. And these are extremely awesome and powerful. Um, and I, I believe it's the AT Mega 32U um, chip. And it has um, U USB uh, capabilities, so you can like make it like a keyboard, a mouse. Um, this is probably what powers a lot of like the custom mechanical keyboard you see is microcontrollers, kind of like this. Um, and it's super small. Um, super micro, so you could do a lot of cool, interesting things, which I'm gonna do um, with those as well. Um, but I got these from, I think, off Amazon from Hitlego, if you wanna check those out. Um, next up, we got another one of these. I got a project that I need to finish uploading to this, and um, it's like a cybersecurity uh, tool. There's, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with these uh, ESP uh, 8266s. So put that there. What else we got in here? So um, for these two, I got some really awesome projects. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico. 
or Pico, however you want to say it. And um, <clears throat> it's similar to the um, Pro Micro in size. It's a little bigger, but um, really similar, really awesome. Uh, you know, obviously Raspberry Pi are the G's. And um, this Pico, I got quite a few uh, interesting projects uh, I'm gonna make with this that I'm gonna share um, a little later. But I really um, have been digging these uh, Raspberry Pi Picos, really can't complain and um, super cheap. And like one project um, I have that I'm working on uh, is like a, a small, you've probably seen these, a lot of these, but like one of those small retro um, gaming controllers. Um, you can do a lot with these. You can make, um, you know, uh, your own Bluetooth controller. You can make your own keyboard, your own mouse. You can do a lot of uh, IoT automation things with these. Um, but super powerful. And um, I mean, I am going to go through China next time, but you can get these uh, relatively cheap on Amazon, you know, maybe about $10 um, a piece. All right. And um, the only other thing that I have in here, <clears throat> just for uh, some testing purposes, uh, I got some headers and LED ohm resistor. All right, so that was just in this tiny, awesome um, Circuit Playground Express box. I, I say if you have not gotten into um, electronics and stuff and um, or want to give a gift to a friend, um, you know, a kid or something, I'd say get this, but it also should have came with um, some alligator clips. I think that was the only thing uh, missing. Um, but if you have a, you know, one of those LiPo batteries, you could plug it into and hit the road. Um, but this is awesome. I'll put a link down below um, if you want to check that out. Let's see what else we got in here. We got a whole bunch of jumper cables because uh, I'm just going to work on... Um, I got a little project. I was gonna work on. Um, but I got my breadboard in here. And here we have um, the micro we saw earlier, the Pro Micro. And we have the ESP8266. These names, you know, kind of weird, annoying, stupid, but you kind of get to know them. Um, so, interesting thing about this project, if you know um, about this Pro Micro, you know, that could be used as a, uh, you know, USB peripheral. So it could be a HID human interface device, or it could be a keyboard or a mouse. Uh, it could be a lot of things or whatever. Um, but the bad thing about this per micro is that it does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So then you come over to this guy who does have Wi-Fi and who does have Bluetooth, but this guy can't be used as um, a USB peripheral. It can, but you know, you need to do some conversions and whatnot. So this couldn't be used as a keyboard or a mouse or um, all that type of stuff. So the idea is to um, combine, connect these two, you know, connect these two and uh, now you have a capable USB Bluetooth um, USB peripheral which can be used for a lot of things which I'm gonna get into later it could be used for nefarious things it can be used for good things macros um, you could have this is how you make you know Bluetooth keyboard this is how you make a Bluetooth mouse and um, the ESP 8266 chip is really cool it's really just uh, this chip right here um, so there are smaller versions of this so this is just um, a proof of concept I'm working on and I'm gonna try and get this set up as small as possible um, so I might mean making my own um, PCB board but you know that's uh, 
one project that I am working on, and we also have, um, <clears throat> you gotta have your adapter. Here's another overview of everything. Give you a nice close up. There goes the 8266. And uh, make sure to check out Adafruit. Really cool. That's all the stuff we have the obviously MacBook Pro. And uh, I want to do a review on this later um, because the new, this is as of uh, May 9th, um, the new iPads have dropped um, the M4s, but it's pretty underwhelming. And this is a um, M2 um, iPad Pro. And I want to do a review because I don't think anyone needs to get the M4. Heck, you don't even need to get that. M2, you don't even need this. You could get uh, the last year's model before this one. Um, but yeah, I have these to test out um, a few certain things. Um, and it's really interesting too because um, Arduino has uh, a web based uh, development IDE. So technically, I could just do a lot on the um, iPad. I'm not exactly like sure. Plug in um, and get serial connections with my iPad. I'm gonna give that a try. Um, but another reason why no one should be getting the new iPad uh, Pro because it's really not a full Mac OS um, thing. Like I can't, um, I, I can plug in things into the USB port, but I'm still kind of confused how it you know, if it, if it can acknowledge serial connections and all that uh, nonsense. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, a nice little uh, to-go box of different stuff. Um, because when I'm at home, you know, I'm, I'm constantly working and trying to upload things and debug things and learn things. Um, so it's nice, you know, to be on the road and, you know, when I have some extra time, uh, just be able to you know, mess around with things. And um, I have some really interesting ideas. I want to mess around with this. And, you know, just having fun and being productive. So I hope you all uh, enjoyed that. Let me know if you enjoy uh, videos like this. Uh, I have a lot of stuff uh, on the way. Um, more or less, I'm starting uh, a business that is focusing on tiny computing for low-income and impoverished uh, communities. Um, there's a few um, African communities that uh, in Uganda that I particularly want to work with. Um, and then once I solidify certain solutions, um, I'm going to, you know, kind of come full circle back with, uh, you know, American low-income impoverished communities as much as I can. Um, you know, there's just like a lot of ideas just on, you know, renewable energy, how can we make tiny computing devices that are easy to charge and stay charged with solar, um, you know, really making solutions that can help for off-grid communities and um, still be te technologically um, advanced and in a modern age. Um, you know, it's a lot more than just like, uh, just give them a Raspberry Pi computer and that's that. I'm trying to really, my end game goal, um, because I've been looking into a lot of, you know, it's not, it's not magic how people make these, you know, and I'm, I'm getting into like PCB design and just um, really designing my own, thing. like I want to make my own version, <laughs> if possible, of a Raspberry Pi that's super cheap and super compact and just what you need. And who knows? Just ideas. So right now I'm just prototyping and I got a, a lot of other cool tools because I do have to make money to carry out these goals. So I have a lot of interesting um, like cybersecurity and like hacker type, gamer type tools um, that I also want to uh, be building and putting out there. Um, yeah, so thank you for uh, seeing what uh, I've been up to.
Um, and mainly, like I said, just getting away from the Apple Google ecosystem. You know, it makes me sick. Like you can make the most philanthrop philanthropy, you know, positive app. And, you know, like even if you want to make a, a, a website for your nonprofit, you know, how, what you have to do to go through either Google uh, Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Amazon uh, Web Services, or whoever third party for cloud and, you know, $99 a year or $50 a year to be on the Apple Store, the Google Play Store. And it's not really about the money, but it's just like, it's just so many different ways. If you looked at a map, of the Google Cloud products. It is sickening. This has no Google Cloud, you know, no Google Cloud, no Microsoft Azure, you know. I've been looking into Laura and I, there's just so much interesting, cool stuff that like you do not need to be, you, you know, you still need to be a part of it. Like I'm not giving up my iPhone, you know, I still got the iPad, you know, I, I need some of these things, but as far as me as being a creator, kind of just trying to do uh, something more independent. And there's a lot of awesome people on this open source um, world and uh, they're really doing good things. So that's my spiel. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll be uh, doing a lot more videos on breaking down um, some of the interesting projects that I'm working on. And um, just like interesting things like with this, you can make this a freaking light show midi controller you know and um just have fun with it as always stay peaceful stay positive stay progressive stay productive and stay proactive and i promise you promise you you'll be blessed look at that dog wow peace y'all